in ceremony at. Yeah, we got a, we got a, we got a sister in the building. Another another another. Um, oh wow! So wow, this. The judge made history today during her swearing in ceremony. At 30 years old, Judge Catherine Thomas is now the youngest district court judge on the bench in the county, and she is also the youngest district judge in the state. Judge Thomas spoke with KPRC 2's Taisha Walker about this really big Why day. Why are these fucking sisters always fucking the first fucking book? Damn, I'm tired of this shit. The first black woman, the first black woman, the first black woman. Man, it's 2023, man. That stuff was fine in the 80s. 2023, fuck the first black person. Just kidding. <laughs> like, what the fuck is this going? What the fuck is this shit? They worship There's black Most qualified person. Is now yeah. They worship them. And why is every fucking place, all the new judges, you notice? All the new judges that they that they're putting in in these positions are black women. Mammies. That's not that's that's not by that's by design. Yes, yeah, it's correct. by design. No, it's correct. definitely not by accident. It's definitely it's definitely definitely an agenda. History yes. today during her Thanks. swearing in ceremony at thirty years old, Judge Thir Catherine Thomas is now a the thirty. Youngest year, how much was how old was the judge yesterday in Michigan? Where was that? Twenty four. Thirty four. Thirty four. Thirty four. Thirty four. So, so, and this judge is 30. The fucking judges. But 34 was Supreme Court. That was highest court yeah, was in state, Michigan. Yeah, that was the state from Supreme Court in Michigan. This one is is, 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 is Texas. This is Texas. This is state. This is the state in Texas. Jesus. What were you all, what was you all maturity level at 30 years old? I was dumb as a box of rocks. I thought I knew. See, thirty when you're thirties, you think you know something. You think you're grown. You're smarter than you are twenty, though. But yes, you know just enough to be to get in way more trouble than you did at twenty. You you're getting to that point where life is about to really throw you a curveball that's going to humble you. Yeah, I think I think I think that's happened to about twenty. I think I think eighteen twenty you start get you get humbled really bad. But I think thirty. You, you you feel like okay I'm still alive, you know what I'm saying? I'm 30. I'm kind of old. All my dreams that I had are fucking been flushed down the toilet. I gotta I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with my life. And then right at that time, yeah, you get another fucking curveball. Boom. That's what I'm you saying. Throw, you throw your back out swiffing at it. So <laughs> it's like it's it's just fucking yeah. It's, I mean, but yeah, another one is coming. Yeah, you don't know shit till you're 40, I think. Yep. District court judge on the bench in the county, and she is also the youngest district judge in the state. Judge Thomas spoke with KPRC 2's Taisha Walker about this really big day and this big milestone only on two. Wow. So, so you good Catherine Thomas is now officially Judge Thomas. As of today, I'm officially the youngest elected judge in the state of Texas, district court judge. Oh the my God. This is terrifying. The year old Houston native was sworn in with her proud and prayerful parents by her side and in front of a packed room of supporters. I love you, Lord. Here, there were no laws of the land, only praise, love, and excitement. Her fellow district court judges watched the historic moment from the jury box. One of the things my mentor told me was that age does not equal experience, and that it doesn't matter how old you are, that you should be confident about the experiences that got you to this point. Judge Thomas is also the first woman of color to sit on the bench here at the 184th District Court. Thomas, who beat out Lori D'Angelo when she was elected last November, is now the third woman to rule in the 184th District Court. From trying a number of cases on the district court level, serving at the DA's office, and just my life experiences, going to two HBCUs like Spelman and Howard and doing clinical work. Oh my God, what oh does God. the HBCU have to do with fucking, are we going to be a good judge or not? Man, Fuck I, you. I bet. At I least bet she wasn't a defense smokes. attorney. I bet she smokes white offenders, white male offenders. Oh yeah, of course. You, 
You're not even supposed to mention that as a judge. You wasn't just say I went to a college. I went to two. I went to a great college, two great schools. Well, I mentioned everything that about her people. is race, though. This yeah, is sickening. everything sickening. Jesus hey, where's Christ. her hairline? Jesus Christ. F DA's office her. and just my life experiences and her mentors. HBCUs like Spelman and Howard and doing clinical work while at Howard. That's what makes you prepare to be a judge. She says she'll be fair and impartial on the bench, but also <laughs> hopes to start a program to provide resources to the youth. Do not let anyone decide. Is that, her son? Is that her kid? Oh, yeah. That's her little gremlin. You think so? Oh, not yeah. Sitting with, sitting with Granny. Not that's sure. It could be just the, the news. That could be just a, the news channel just saying, you know, this is who she's yeah, going to be. What's the white boy next to them? Yeah, is this the father? No, I, I, I take that bet. I take that bet. Not for a dollar, I don't think so. You're, okay. Be fair and impartial on the bench, but also hopes to start a program to provide resources to the youth. Do not let anyone despise your youth and that you can obtain any goal and dream if you just believe in yourself and work hard. In downtown Houston, I would hope that a woman at 30 who becomes a judge would have busted her ass so hard that she wouldn't have time to have a fucking kid. Yo, oh, heck yeah. I don't think yeah. that's her kid because at least yeah. they admit they're her parents. Yeah. Tanisha Walker, KPRC 2 News. All right, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Sharice Gibson. Katie is off tonight. Senator Alyssa Curtis, Eyewitness News. Alyssa Two men in a tow truck were shot and wounded on the northwest side near the Kennedy Expressway. The truck ended up near Pulaski and Palmer, and that's where Eric Rung joins us live with details. Eric. Well, good morning. The tow truck was just towed out of here a short time ago. We are told that both men that were shot should be okay. They're at the hospital recovering right now. The driver perhaps tried to drive the truck to get help or just get out of danger. Either way, it ended up here near Pulaski and Palmer. It's about a five minute drive from where the shots were fired early this morning, around two, uh, around two this morning. Police right now say one of the men was hit in the stomach. The other had a graze wound to the head. Police report a person in a dark colored SUV opened fire on the tow truck while it was parked. Detectives continue their investigation. Right now, Chicago police are telling us that no one is in custody. We are live in the Hermosa neighborhood. I'm Eric Rock, WGN News. Wow. Two people are dead and three more wounded after a shooting in Central City last night. And sadly, it's not the first time there's been gun violence in that neighborhood. Sam Woodstrom has more. So this is another mass shooting in fucking New Orleans.